Uh, we're celebrating 20 years of the Bush School this year, so we're still kind of a baby college. Uh, but the issues we're addressing are serious issues because we have a fantastic faculty. We have a student body that just wants to go serve their fellow citizens, whether it's at the state, the community, the federal level, it doesn't matter. They just want to serve. That's why they come here. And we've got this incredible university and the resources associated with it to help us look at issues that make a difference, which is why we're here today. Uh, I just spent the weekend, by the way, with our newest grandchild, which is why I'm going to kind of be smiling all day long. We had five grandsons, and now we have a granddaughter, so all things are now possible. And she's spoiled rotten after 48 hours. It's, it's, it's going to get much worse, I'm afraid. In fact, I'm a little worried about money already. My, we could be bankrupt by the end of the week. Betty's considering a car as a, a kind of a birth present. Uh, it's going to get ugly. Uh, let me tell you why I'm excited about this, this particular conference. So we are going to have people here today from leaders of our federal government. We have leaders of the state, leaders of cities and communities. We've got great scholars who are going to be here today. We have incredible public servants. Where'd you go, Ambassador? I know you're here somewhere. Uh, who will be, Ambassador Russell will be here in a, in, uh, this morning to speak with you. We have uh, great people who have accomplished things in their communities for their cities, their states, and for the nation in this particular regard. And we have people who have studied this topic or would like to study this topic from a broad range of colleges here at Texas A&M and universities around the country. So the audience, first of all, is fantastic. Secondly, the topic is just fascinating and it's important. Now, let me give you my perspective. Uh, for years, I believe, women have been seen as victims of conflict. And I think increasingly over time, maybe even as causes of conflict. And what's wonderful about this particular conference is that this is about, at its base, women as solution to conflict. Uh, I believe in the concept because I grew up as the oldest of seven children. Now, my little brother is 20 years younger than I am, so he lived in a different world than I did growing up. But I have five younger sisters, and we are all one year apart. So when I was seven years old, I was the oldest of six with five younger sisters. And I learned everything in life from them, essentially. My dad was in the military, so we traveled all over the world. Everywhere we went, my dad would then deploy from there, and it would be me and my sisters and my mom. So my world was women growing up. And I found it to be an interesting world. Every time we moved to a new location, what the people there didn't know is when I started picking my baseball team or my football team, I started with my sisters. My sister Monica was the best athlete on the block, always, everywhere we lived. My sister Maureen was faster than anybody else, so she had all the speed on the block. My sister Nan, within 24 hours of arriving in a new neighborhood, was walking around like the Pied Piper with every pet in the neighborhood following her. And my sister Molly was like Florence Nightingale. If someone was hurt in street football or somebody's feelings got hurt, Molly was over shepherding them and getting them through and getting them prepared for the next hurdle in life. She was just a remarkable, very, very young healer and consoler. And then my youngest sister, Margaret, was just smarter than all of us combined, still is. So that was the world I grew up in. And then I went into a professional world where there weren't nearly as high a percentage of women. 18 to 22 percent in my profession, which was the military for 40 years. But along the way, I met remarkable women who were succeeding despite the imbalance and despite the hurdles that realistically had been in place forever. It wasn't that women didn't compete well in the military, it's that we couldn't keep them around to compete long enough. You know, in the Air Force, for example, women competed better than men for promotion to colonel, to one star, and to two star general. Every year for the last 20 years, they've had higher promotion rates. The problem was only half as many got to that point. So something happened in the middle where we lost all that talent. And then I went to the CIA to work. I was a pretty senior white male by that point. And I noticed an organization that was almost 50% women that did everything differently. And it intrigued me. And it wasn't, by the way, because women brought all the good ideas. It was because they brought different good ideas. They brought different perspectives. They brought different solutions. They brought different conversations and different styles to every debate. And everything was better because of it. That's what today's about. It's about making our world better. Why would we eliminate 50% of the great ideas, 50% of the possible solutions, 50% of the perspectives on a problem? It makes no common sense, and I am all about common sense. Professor Valerie Hudson's been leading this discussion in a meaningful way for most of her career. 
and she's changing the debate from a subjective one to an objective one with her Women's Stats database. And now she has the opportunity to bring together your voices and take this to the next level. Thank you so much for joining us. This subject matters to all of us. And I just appreciate you being here to be part of the conversation. Valerie, over to you. Welcome to everyone. I'm so grateful that you've come, and I know there will be more joining us, and we are going to have one terrific day. I'm Valerie Hudson. I am professor, and I hold the George H.W. Bush Chair, which is a real honor, here at the George H.W. School at Bush School of Government and Public Service. So I feel especially honored, in a sense, to be representing um, uh, the George H.W. Bush um, family and administration, in a sense, uh, in hosting this symposium. Um, I'm uh, really excited to tell you that we have partnered with the Bush Institute, that is the Bush 43 Institute, uh, and Amanda Schnetzer, my um, uh, counterpart uh, at the Bush Center, uh, will be addressing us for a few moments um, about the programs that they have there. But first, let me issue a thank you, first of all, to Dean Welsh and the Bush School for their support for the Compton Foundation, whose generous funding made this symposium possible, and to all of the participants, some of whom have come from very far. Dr. Ibrahimi, for example, has come from Afghanistan to be with us today. I am very, very grateful to all of them. Uh, some logistical matters. Number one, where are the bathrooms? <laughs> you walk out the door that you came in, you turn left, you make another left, they're right there. Okay, so very, very close. Uh, second, parking. Uh, if those of you um, who came parked in any other place besides the, um, the Bush Library parking lot, um, just let us know and we can show you uh, where you should be parking to avoid a ticket. If you are faculty or staff and parked here, you get the opposite advice. Don't park in the Bush Presidential Library parking lot if you have a Texas A&M sticker. Park in lot 43 or in Fanfield. And again, we can help you with that. All right, uh, there is one change to the program that you should know. We're going to be honored by the presence of uh, Representative Bill Flores of our own district um, here today, and he will be introducing Representative Kay Granger. Now, a couple of words about women, peace, and security at Texas A&M. Uh, and that wants you to know that in December 2015, we began um, the Women, Peace, and Security program here at uh, the Bush School. Uh, and I was thrilled to see the vision and support that we were given from the administration. Uh, we now have a curriculum and a concentration for our students. Uh, so for example, we have courses in basic gender analysis, women and nations, women development and environmental conflict. We are even doing a capstone with the State Department's Office of w uh, Global Women's Issues, where our students are actually going to be looking at foreign fighters and issues of gender. Um, and lastly, of course, uh, uh, Dean Welsh mentioned that we do have um, a, a very large research project, the Women's Stats Project, that's housed here at the Bush School. We're just coming off of a three-year Minerva grant, and I'll be telling you a little more about uh, all of that research uh, shortly. All right, well, I'm going to turn it over to Amanda for a few minutes to talk about what's going on at the Bush Center. And then I think somehow we also need to get our slide back up, and I think... Uh, uh, the program timed out, the screen times out every 15 minutes. So we'll get that fixed too. So good morning, good morning to everyone. My name is Amanda Schnetzer and I am the Director of Global Initiatives at the George W. Bush Institute in Dallas. I want to thank Valerie and Dean Welsh for the invitation to collaborate on this symposium. We thank you very much for that. Um, we 
appreciate the chance to get to know the Bush School and its people and faculty and students and its mission better. Of course, we know that the man whose name is on this building and the man whose name is on our building already know each other well, but we think it's important to continue to build those ties between our institutions, and I think this is a great way to do that. Um, we have many areas of shared interest, um, including the really important and vital topic that we're all here to talk about today, the contributions and the significance of women to building peace and security in their families, in their communities, and in their countries. Um, since 2009, for those of you who might not know much about the Bush Center in Dallas, we have been working to help President and Mrs. Bush fulfill the highest vision that they have for the Bush Institute and the Bush Center to um, advance leaders, to develop policy, to take action um, on some of the most critical and vital issues of our time. We do this through two what we call impact centers, one called domestic excellence, where we focus on the need in our country today for a quality education system for everyone um, to grow the economy of the United States, to provide a promising pathway and transition for men and women who are serving in our armed forces, who are coming back into civilian life. And then we do this through our global leadership impact center which I am a part of and my colleagues here who are a part of, um, where we think that it's important for societies around the world to have healthy communities, to have peaceful and open and more democratic and freer societies, and also to invest in the role of an empowerment of women in their societies. Um, our women's initiative touches on the role of women and peace and security in a variety of ways. Perhaps the most visible has been Mrs. Bush's continued work and ongoing commitment to the people and particularly the women of Afghanistan. Um, excuse me. We know that women in Afghanistan, including many who are in this audience today, are strong and capable individuals who have a very clear vision for their society. And for the last 16 years, Mrs. Bush and President Bush have been committed to trying to lend their support and platform um, wherever they can. Um, Mrs. Bush and Mrs. Ghani, the First Lady of Afghanistan, were in Washington recently and held a congressional briefing that actually Congresswoman Granger participated in, and that's a good example of our work. Razia Jean, Razia, where are you? There you are. Razia um, has been featured in a Bush Institute book called We Are Afghan Women. We think that we can talk all day long, but it's much better to share the stories of men and women around the world who are really doing the hard work. And Razia, we're really honored that, that you're featured in, in one of our publications. Our First Ladies Initiative is supporting global First Ladies who have a vision for their societies and um, trying to help them advance the strategies that improve the lives of women and young people in their countries. Countries. And you'll hear more about these projects throughout the day from my colleagues, Farhat Popal, who manages our work in the Middle East and North Africa and Afghanistan, and Natalie Ganella Platts, who leads our women's initiative, um, and even from Jacob Allen from the Cicero Group, who's been a critical um, advocate for ours and supporter of ours as we've built our strategy in the early days of the, the Bush Institute's life. So for now, let me simply thank you for your time and your interest the Monday before Thanksgiving in these issues. I think it says a lot that this group is here and so dedicated to these issues. And I look forward to getting to know all of you throughout the day. So thank you.